coolant expansion tank in a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 1.9 PD ATD engine 99 for 2007. If you have a coolant light come on your dashboard after starting the engine, mine comes on after about 20 seconds and this can signal a number of possible faults. This video is going to concentrate on the coolant expansion tank which is located on top of the wheel arch next to the engine. When I first saw the warning light I first suspected the water temperature sensor which I replaced and in my case fixed the problem. But if you've already done that and you've still got a warning light then the expansion tank is the next thing to look at as these are known to throw up a warning light when the level sensor contacts become corroded over time. The expansion tank is attached with two nuts under this uh, plastic cable holder and a locating slot underneath. But before you take it off it's worth checking the connection onto the level sensor which goes into the bottle. To take the clip off there's a little clip at the top but there's also one underneath and you just need to nip them together to, and then pull it off. Make sure the connections are clean. And it fits on securely, clipping into place. And then just check the wires going into the connection that they're not damaged or frayed in any way and of course you need to check the water level in the actual expansion tank which when cold should be on the lower level take the engine cover off to take the tank off we first need to take the top off and remove the contents you could do this by draining the system from the drain at the bottom of the radiator but you'd have to take all the uh, under tray off and I don't want to do that and it's not really necessary. An ideal way of taking the water out is with a turkey baster similar to this one which are very cheap to buy and have many other uses around the car. You might want to use gloves to protect your hands as glycol is uh, an irritant and be sure to wear protective eyewear and obviously don't swallow it. But it's unlikely to damage the paintwork as these cars were built after 1980 when polyurethane paints were widely introduced. To get the last bit of coolant out, grab hold of the radiator hose down here and squeeze it which will send some more coolant up into the expansion tank for, for you then to remove. When you've removed all the coolant you should get around 750 millilitres. Put that somewhere safe. Detach the two fuel pipes by pushing out on the clip and sliding down. You need to take this plastic cable guide that's attached over the top of the nuts that hold the tank in place. First remove a, a clip on the cable trunking on the inner wing, just here, that just pulls out. Take the cable guide off, you just need to put your finger around it and then lift it up gently but firmly and then pull it back slightly to expose the nuts and then take off the nuts I used a quarter inch 10mm socket and wrench I just loosened them until I could get hold of them with my fingers be careful not to lose the nuts into the engine bay somewhere Undo and remove the nut holding the vacuum unit to the bulkhead.
then lift off the bracket from the threaded spigot you'll have to bend it forward slightly also detach the vacuum hoses on the bulkhead just here once the whole unit's loose you'll be able to lift it off and turn it upside down which clears the area to remove the expansion tank now you'll notice the threads holding the vacuum unit also hold down the expansion tank as these are a kind of double sided screw so you've got to take those out which are also 10 millimeter Rock the tank from side to side while pulling upwards to remove the bottom slot support. It's like a serrated comb that fits into the slot here. Now we just got to undo the pipes, the top expansion and bottom lower feed. And I found the ideal tool to take the clips off was a plumber's pipe wrench as the serrated teeth uh, grip onto the clips nicely and much better than a pair of pliers. Nip the clips together and slide down the pipe. These pipes slip off very easily. One bottle removed. Here's the new bottle. You don't seem to be able to see where the contacts go, either from the outside or the inside. So I don't think there's a way of cleaning them anyway. Now it's just a question of putting the pipes back on. Put the feed pipe on first. And I like to align the clips into the exact same position that they came off. Here's the double sided bolt that holds the tank down with an M6 thread on one end and uh, a screw thread on the other which screws into a, a plastic insert on the body. And one thing to note is that you need a long enough socket to fit onto the bolt which needs to be at least 25 millimeters long so it clears the thread. Here's a half inch socket that uh, fits on nice and snugly as I'm going to use to refit these as initially I slipped holding onto the quarter inch 10 mil socket and it ended up falling down into the engine and I've been unable to retrieve it as it fell down in between the fuel lines which I'll show you a little bit later in the video. Reinsert the bottom mounting tab into the slot making sure it seats into place over the plastic inserts. Then holding the double sided bolt in the socket, reinsert and tighten home. Keeping hold of it at all times.
flip back over the vacuum unit and refit the brackets onto the threads slightly bend the bracket onto the bulkhead and replace all the nuts one word of caution don't drop anything down here I've had to say goodbye to a 10mm socket well at least for now that is I might be able to retrieve it later stage Push back the cable harness over the top of the threads. The two fuel pipes on the side of the tank. Vacuum pipes on the bulkhead. Trunking connector on the inner wing. And finally the uh, connector for the level sensor. Making sure it clicks into place. Now all you've got to do is refill the bottle with coolant. up to the lower level and the job's done and refit the cap of course thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video